Hi everybody. So I'm in my last few weeks of pregnancy and I have resulted to needing to do my introductions sitting on the couch because my back will no longer let me get up and about. So here I am lying down doing my intros. I hope no one minds. <laughs> so today our lesson is all about Claude Monet. And I love doing lessons on Claude Monet because he is my number one out of every other artist in the whole entire world, my favorite. And that's because of all of the beautiful colors he uses and the impressionist style that he paints. Impressionism is all about creating an idea of an object or a landscape or something that he's trying to paint rather than giving every detail. Yeah. was not just an artist but he was a gardener so he used to maintain this beautiful big garden in Giverny in France and he actually had a big bridge over an enormous lake and the lake was filled with water lilies so he would sit there and he would paint these beautiful water lilies in a variety of ways so I'm going to show you how he did that um, and today we're going to have a go at creating an artwork of Monet's water lilies as well. Now, about 14 years ago, I was lucky enough to travel to France and go to Giverny, the town where Monet lived, and I went to his home, which is now a museum. And you can actually walk around and can see all the rooms in Claude Monet's house. You can see his kitchen, which is yellow, by the way, randomly. <laughs> and you can also walk around his enormous and gorgeous garden, which has continued to be maintained to this day. And so I was lucky enough to go with my own art teacher who happened to be my mother. <laughs> and so my mum and I walked around Monet's garden and it inspired me further and made me just fall in love with him as an artist even more. So come with me today and I'll show you a little bit about Monet and how to have a go at creating an artwork in his style. For our Claude Monet inspired task today, the main materials that you'll need will be a single piece of white paper, You'll need some crayons, some wax crayons, and something to paint over the top with. Now, what you'll be able to use to do a wax crayon resist is either some watercolors, but if you don't have those, you can actually use some food dye. I'll show you how to use food dye in art today. So whatever colors you have will work, but I've gotten a selection of cool colors here, blues, greens, and purples, which I think will look beautiful with our water lilies. You'll need a brush to paint with as well once we do that section. So gather up your materials and we'll be starting with the crowns. Before we create anything today, let's have a bit of a look at how Monet used to create his water lilies. Now he absolutely loved his garden and he had a massive lake with a beautiful Japanese bridge and willow trees everywhere. It's so gorgeous every season of the year. And so what Claude Monet used to do was go outside, he would take his canvas, his paints, his easel, everything he needed, and he would paint outside. In French, that's called en plein air, which means to actually go out in the elements and paint, either in the sunshine, the snow, the wind, the rain, I don't know if you've ever done that before. I've tried and I tell you what, it's pretty tricky unless it's a beautiful sunny day. If it's windy, the canvas flies off. If it's rainy, the canvas gets wet. Mud might go on your beautiful artwork, things like that. So there were definitely a lot of challenges to painting on plein air. But the reason Claude Monet used to do it is because he wanted to look so closely at what was happening with the light around him. His garden was his subject, but light was also a subject of his. And lighting changes from different times of the day. A morning sunrise will change the lighting to what it's like in the middle of the day or toward the end of the day at dusk. Lighting also changes depending on the season. Winter might be a li little bit more of a gray kind of light. Whereas in summer, it's a bright, beautiful light and all the colors might shine differently. So Monet needed to be out in the elements outside so that he could see the light clearly and put it onto his canvas. 
So when he painted his water lilies, you can see here, he used to create them in a variety of different ways. Sometimes he would get really, really, really close up to his water lilies and make them really big like this one, showing all the details and the colors in each individual water lily. But sometimes he would step further back and create more of a scene on his lake with lots of little water lilies. They almost look like blobs because he's an impressionist artist. Sometimes he's in, he'll include his bridge, this beautiful Japanese bridge. And this is one of the most recognizable artworks in all the world, Claude Monet's bridge. Sometimes he wouldn't use the bridge. He'd just use the willow tree's leaves coming down, as you can see amongst the lake and the reflection that they used to create as well. Sometimes his water lilies would be more colourful than others and I can imagine that that would probably be in spring or summer when the colours really pop. Later in his life, Claude Monet actually used to create art in a studio as well because he would create massive artworks. Artworks that would take up a whole room. A room of beautiful lake colours and water lilies and willows and grass and greenery and beautiful cool colours. So now that we've looked at all the different types of water lilies Monet has done, hopefully that inspires you to create your very own water lily artwork. So we're going to get a plain piece of paper now and I'm going to get a few water lily colours. You could pretty much use every colour of the rainbow here if you wanted to. I'm going to start off with a few greens a few purples. I'm trying to use some cool colors to start off with. Now, whatever you create today, it does not need to look just like mine. As you can see, Claude Monet used to create lots of different types of water lilies. So if you would like to have a go at creating a close up one, you can. If you want to create really colorful water lilies, you can. If you want to do the bridge, you can. So I'm just going to show you a technique called a wax crayon resist and we're gonna use the water lilies as the subject. Whatever type of water lilies you choose to do today, you need to ensure you press really hard with your crayon. The harder you press, the brighter the crayon will be once we paint over the top of it. So if we press really lightly like this, all of our beautiful work might actually get lost during the next step. So try to press nice and hard. Now remember, a water lily doesn't actually have to look like a perfect green water lily like this. Claude Monet also used to just create blobs. He would, he would do sort of an oval shape and just color it in or paint it with lots and lots of different colors on his palette. If you looked up closely, it just looked like a blob of paint. But when you step back, it looked like a big water lily picture. So you can have a go at maybe just creating a water lily. As you can see here, I've colored it in, I've done a bit of white as well, if you have white, and just filled the whole water lily with maybe three or four different colors. Remember the harder you press, the brighter your art is going to be once we paint over the top. It's actually quite fun being a little bit abstract. Use your colors on top of each other, see what happens. And do what Monet did and explore all the different colors in his garden. Have a go at drawing some ovals. You might have a go at drawing some little ones like this. But you can see they're all kind of going long ways like this because we have to imagine the water is kind of rippling along. So we want to work horizontally. That's this way. That will make our artwork look a little bit more like a lake. So try to make your ovals horizontal ovals. Mix up your colors. Don't just use the same color over and over. That would be a bit boring, wouldn't it? Now, I know you can't see the white at the moment, but I promise you it'll look really cool once I paint over it with some of my watercolors or my food dye. Just make sure we're coloring neatly side to side, like that. Overlapping. Just 
Did you know Claude Monet is my favorite artist in the whole world? Yep. Here are some of my water lilies so far. What you can see is that none of them look exactly the same. I've mixed up my colors, I've layered some colors. Each time I've had a go at sort of creating an horizontal oval like this, and then just worked away at coloring it in, using all the different colors I have here. I'm trying to stay in the lines to make my work as neat as possible. filling my space with lots and lots of water lilies. Now, what you can choose to do is actually put some lilies on top, like this, like the flowers. They sort of just look like spiky plants on top. You can choose to do that if you want to. You don't have to. As I said, another option was to draw the bridge if you'd like to do that. I'm not going to do that today, but if you'd like to, this is how I suggest to draw it. The first thing you need to do is do an arch, kind of like a rainbow. And then you need to have another go at doing an arch, a parallel one. So that means that the lines never touch like that. You could have a go at drawing it in pencil first if you think you need that. And then just some vertical lines connecting the two arches together. Remember, it needs to be nice and thick, nice and strong lines. If you draw too lightly, it will disappear soon. Another thing you could choose to do uh, the, is the suggestion of the willow trees, which is those weeping willow, droopy, droopy kind of trees that have the leaves that come down like this. I love a weeping willow tree. And so I'm gonna have a go at trying to show that in my picture again pressing really hard but it just looks like raindrops really coming down might use different types of green if you have them this brings it to life a little bit more and remember when you draw a tree a tree doesn't have to look like that even though there were trees everywhere we're more so drawing the leaves of the trees rather than the whole trunk and the whole branch. So we're just giving an idea that the tree was hanging over the lake. I'm going to keep going and just fill this little bit here and then I'll show you step number two. Lots and lots of water lilies. Again, they kind of just look like blobs, don't they? Some of them have flowers on them. I've got some weeping willow leaves coming down. Got a little bit of ripple water and lots of beautiful different cool colors to show my water lilies. And now I'll show you step number two. For step number two, you have two options. If you have some watercolors at home, you may just use a little bit of water, a little bit of your light colors, and you can actually just paint directly over the top of your crayon. Can you see that that wax resist is happening? Because I've pressed nice and hard, the crayon is not disappearing. It's, it's um, resisting against the water. You can see I can paint straight over and my colors are shining through. If you have watercolor, you may go ahead and use watercolor there. However, if you don't, or if you'd like to have a go at something different today, food dye is an awesome option. Now, I have three jars here because I have three colors I would like to use. Now, I've only filled the jar with a little bit of water. You don't need much. And all we need is one or two drops for each of the colors you would like to use for your water. Now, I always like using more than one color because I think it makes it look more interesting. But if you've just got one today, that's perfectly fine as well. You can 
see when I paint, it's a similar effect to watercolors. Now, obviously the more food dye you add to your water, the darker the color's going to be. See, that's, that's a little bit too light, my green there, so I might just need to add an extra drop. So I'm still going to work side to side horizontally because that's the way water kind of ripples and, and flows. So I'm going to have a go at using all three of my colours together, filling my space with beautiful cool colours. I can paint directly over the top of my water lilies right to the corners. I don't need to wash my brush because it's okay that the colors are kind of blending together. Blending is when the colors merge together like that. Can you see that? And it looks really beautiful. Maybe you can have a go at doing some blending. Now, please be aware that food dye can be extremely messy because it essentially, well, it dyes things. It changes the color of things. So if you've got tablecloth down if you have some special clothes that you're wearing please be very very careful or please put some newspaper down or an art smock on because if you get a drop of this onto your clothes it's extremely difficult to get it off again okay so it doesn't look like it's all that messy but it can be so please take care This part doesn't take all that long, but it does look beautiful, doesn't it? It's my water from my lake, and you can see all the little white bits that I've done with my white crayon are now becoming visible because I'm painting colour over the top. Now, blending happens when you paint two colours on top of each other when they're both still wet. So blending does not happen if I let this colour dry, but if I paint over it now, see the colors blend together really beautifully so have a go at that if you can painting side to side again staying nice and neat using all your colors making a beautiful Monet water lily pond there we go oh man that was fun I hope you enjoyed it too